So John 14, 2 to 3. <clears throat> In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So <clears throat> what we're doing, what Joyce wants to talk about is the rapture, right? Right? And what we think about that, right? Okay. Um, so, so this passage says that Jesus will come again, that we will go to be with him because he will take us to be with him. We will have our own space in some sense, right? That's a weird word, that word that's translated room, rooms, it, uh, in older translations, it's mansions, but it's not really a house. Um, I so, it's yes, but it's not like it, it doesn't carry an implication of a fancy house, right? It's yeah. just your own space, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, but it doesn't say anything about a rapture, right? It doesn't say that we'll be taken up from wherever we are into the into the sky. Okay? Um, so, so First Corinthians, actually Romans three ten. Let's do Romans. Romans 3, verse 10, is, um, uh, None is righteous, no, not one. Or as it is written, he's, St. Paul is quoting here, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. I'm not sure what that has to do with it. That's 10 and 11. Um, dun, 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 dun. Romans 13, maybe? Thirteen, ten. No, that's not it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's do First Corinthians fifteen. That's Philippians, Galatians, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians fifteen. <clears throat> All right, I tell you this, brothers, I'm starting a little before that. Uh, this is verse 50. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we shall be changed. I, I was just going to say, whenever I read that passage... The trumpet shall sound. For, for this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O death, where is, where, o death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? So, so that is about... Um, that is about our perfection, right? Um, as we grow in the Lord and when we go to be with him, right? Um, and it's not that we won't have bodies. It's that they will be perfected, right? He says the sting of death is sin. So it'll be sinless, right? We will be sinless. Um, uh, but it's not about being a ghost, right, or pure spirit. Angels are pure intelligences, pure spirits. Um, that's not, not for us. 
And again, it's not about, uh, it, it doesn't really tell us how that happens, right? It, it doesn't give us a process. It gives us an endpoint, right? Um, so that's what that one does. So this one is the, um, the linchpin verse. 1 Thessalonians 4. <clears throat> I was I was thinking before it was Second Thessalonians, but it's it's First Thessalonians, um, four thirteen to seventeen. So, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that is dead, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Now concerning the times, and I'm I'm reading on a little bit, all right. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. <clears throat> for God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see he's playing with um, the, the whole... Uh, w- with. He's doing a, a, a word play on sleep, right? Because at one point, he's talking about those who are asleep in terms of the ones who are, have passed away, right? The ones who are dead. <clears throat> and in another place, he's talking about those who are asleep as in the people who are alive but not ready. And then in another place, he's talking about sleep, right? Whether we sleep or are awake... Right? We're saved. Right? So he's talking about literal sleep. He's using the word sleep or asleep in all those different ways. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so uh, through, through this, this passage, um, and he's using lots and lots of images and imagery for different things as he goes through. I don't think this is a literal prediction, okay, of <clears throat> being lifted up into the air bodily, okay? Um, when we're, uh, in fact, it doesn't, uh, let me see. Um, <clears throat> And I would have to look up the Greek there for the word, uh, the, the word that's used, air. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure which word that is. So anyway, <clears throat> um, it, it's, not ev- it, it's really talking about the clouds, right? So it's really talking about the heavens, right, up in the sky, okay? Um, well... We know that that is something of an uh, an image, anyway, right? I mean, Jesus is re- uh, 
uh, ascended into heaven, right, into the sky. And in some sense, we can use the word sky or heaven, which is the same word, same idea, right, at, to mean the place where God is. But those two things are not literally the same, right? Yeah. Right? So that makes our modern brains hurt, right? The ancients could just say, you know, they, they had the idea of a sky god. Sky is just where God is. Now we have this one god and the only god, but he's in the sky, right? In the heavens. And they could just leave it at that, right? <clears throat> well, now we've gotten to the point where we've studied God's creation enough Right to say, not sure that's going to work. Right in a literal sense. Um, honestly, to me, that doesn't bother me. Right? I mean, I don't. It doesn't matter. Right? Um, the fact that I can't tell you where God is does not bother me. Right? Okay. Uh, I can still use the word heaven. Right? And say God's in heaven. Now, that doesn't, when I say it that way, it doesn't mean God is just that way. Right? I mean, he could be that way. I don't know. Right? And God the Father is, is incorporeal by nature. Right? So he's everywhere. Right? Or he's, he's not everywhere. He's present everywhere. Right? There's a difference. Right? Between saying he is everywhere and he's present everywhere. Um, so you really, you really start to get into thing, into places where, you know, uh, you want to do that Monty Python radio routine, right? My brain hurts. My head is stuck in the cupboard, right? Um, it really does hurt when you try and kind of think through what do we mean by that exactly? But again, that doesn't bother me because I don't, that's not what this is telling me. It's not tr- what, what this book is trying to teach me, right? It, it, that's not, it's not a science book, right? You can, you can use the word heaven right. as a one word description of where God is. Right. Rather than a place. Right. Per se, as we think of heaven, we have mm-hmm. this vision of heaven. Right. Where we got that, it's like a caveman. Right. I don't know where we got that. <laughs> what I got out of those passages that, that you were reading there mm-hmm. was okay, there's, there's going to be a, a new body for us. And it's going to be a body that is not like what we have. A now. spiritual Very body. Yeah. Not, not meaning incorporeal, but meaning perfected. I'm right? wondering if that's not the soul that he's like, referring to. Maybe. Right, so, yeah, no, that's a good question. This is hard, right? St. Paul is, is doing some really heavy um, kind of philosophy stuff here, right? So what he's saying, and this is the First Corinthians passage, right? Um, what he's saying is that we will be, we have died to sin, right? Right? And we are alive in Christ. And that <clears throat> our mortal bodies, right, are going are part of that dead nature. Yeah. Right? And so we're gonna have to put them off. Right. We're gonna need a new body, like just like you said. Yeah, read the right? soul. Yeah, right. Well, no, wait a minute. No. So so this body is fallen. Yeah. Just like my my body, mind, and spirit are all fallen, mm-hmm. right? And so, uh, but, but in a biblical sense, a human being is a body, mind, and spirit, right? Um, to have a human being without a body is contrary to God's creation, right? I mean, that's not, that's not what a human being is. Not the ghost. Right, yeah. right. Or, or a geist, right, in German, okay. right? Spirit, same, same idea. Um, so what, so he's not really talking about body versus uh, the corporal, corporeal versus incorporeal parts of our nature here, 
right? He's not splitting the human being up into different parts and saying, this will live on and that won't, right? What he's saying is, this is still fallen. It's got to it's gotta still die, right? It's got to, it's got to still die, right? So, so our, our dying to sin is, a, is not just a one-time, you know, a momentary affair. I mean, it is in the sense that we're, we died with Christ at our baptism, mm-hmm. right? But then it's also an ongoing process of dying to sin and living with Christ, right, or in Christ. And so this part of us has to eventually go away, and we will receive a perfected version of that the spiritual body, right, which is flesh and mind and spirit, right? Um, Spiritual in the sense that it is purified rather than fallen, right? Um, That's a hard one, but he's not really, he's not really talking about an incorporeal like soul or spirit, right? The human soul Includes a spirit, or includes a, a body, um, which is the really hard part for us to get around because that's not the way we use that word. We have we have two traditions that we inherit. Okay, um, one is the Greek tradition of the New Testament, right? Body, mind, spirit. That's a human being, and that's the Hebrew inheritance as well, right? Um, he, he breathed it into the breath of, breath of life and he became a living soul, right? Which includes a body, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, so that's sort of the biblical tradition, but it's been overlaid in some of what we do with the Latin tradition, which splits the human being into two parts, the body and the soul, Okay? And so that's easy, right? The body is the physical part of you, and the soul is the non-physical part of you. And the body right? dies, but the soul. But remains. the soul is on, right? That's not really. That's not really how the Bible, the biblical writers think about it, right? So, any time we start talking about the soul, we need to start to stop and say, okay. Do I mean that in the Latin H tradition of the non-physical part of the human being? Or do I mean that in the biblical tradition of meaning a soul is a human being? All of it. All of the human being. Right? Um, Is the soul considered to be the emotion? The soul is, well, in the biblical tradition, right, the soul is a human being. Right? So the word psuche in, in Greek, right? Um, uh, whoever gives up his psuche for my sake, right? Now that word can be translated several different ways. It could be translated soul, but it doesn't mean your, your non-physical part, right? Um, it could be translated self, right? Whoever gives up his own self. For my sake. Okay? You're talking about an identity. Right? Not, not, not a part of a human being. Okay? So the soul, or psuche, is the self. The human being. As such. Does that help at all? I, I know, we're, I know we're, we're going down the rabbit hole. But but, yeah, yeah. but I, I understand this is hard stuff. Well, now I, I understand that that the big thing as far as a changed body is going to be just for a body that's incorruptible. Right. I mean, well, so, you know, but to me that's all uncorrupted yeah. and incorruptible. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to go, but I'm remembering right. a bit what you said. You said there's only one God, and before that you said something. That's yeah. Do you remember that? Uh, no, I don't. I'm gonna have to look back at it. <laughs> and you said of, uh, I don't memorize my sermons, so I have you to. Said, there's only one God, but you said something just before that. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Two questions. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. 
first off, it says that the ones who die righteous will rise up first prior to those who are still alive on earth. Right. And I, and what it says that you will be with me in paradise or you will be with me, that's all I need mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know a place or a room, a mansion, whatever. Right. Does that, and no one answers, I mean, there's no answer. There's but, Yeah, there's no answer there's to no the answer. specific questions about that, right. But does that mean that we all who died prior to the coming, mm -hmm. just, as I say, lie molding in the grave, waiting for Christ so, to come rise us up? Yeah, so that's a really interesting question, and there is not really a biblical answer to it, right? Some people have suggested a kind of soul sleep, mm -hmm. right? So in the sense that you're, you're not really conscious until you're resurrected again, right? Um, uh, that kind of has an appeal to me, but again, I'm not going to pin that right. down because I don't, yeah, I don't think there is an answer, yeah. right? Um, there are other passages in the Bible where it does seem like you know, the, the spirits of the, the, the righteous, or, or at least some of them, have gone to be with God already. But those passages are really hard to tease out, like what exactly they mean, right? Um, and whenever, whenever a passage is highly symbolic like that, I, I tend to try not right. yeah, yeah. to, well, I try, I, I try not to, you know, use it as the, the, the sole foundation of some big doctrine, right? right? I, think, I think we are, I, I had a professor in seminary who once said in class, you know, you just can't be more systematic than the Bible is. I, I mean, in one sense, that's not true. Like, you can take the biblical teachings and you can try and order them in some, some intellectual system, right? But I think he has a point that when you hit those places in your system, right, where you go, ah, uh, yeah, no way, the, the Bible doesn't answer that question, you'd better stop. Right, and not create an answer to that question just to satisfy your system, rather than going back to the Bible and saying, "Okay, we think this, but then over here we're not sure." See what I mean? Um, we have the same problem with, say, uh, the um, the later uh, kind of Calvinist theology. Right? They set up this this system. Right? We say no man is entirely fallen. Right? There's no bit of him that is not fallen. That's total depravity, right? And God is absolutely sovereign. So whatever happens must be God's will. And not everybody is saved, clearly. And so therefore it must be God's will that some people not be saved. And that's from the very beginning, right? And, and you go, whoa, 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 time out. See what I mean? Um, and you can tell what they're, you can see what they're doing. And as someone who really likes intellectual systems, I get it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm sympathetic. Um, but you can't make the Bible say that, and so you can't say that just to satisfy your system, because you know God is more than your system, always. Like no matter how good it is, and you're you're not allowed to just sort of systematize it such that you deny certain parts of the Bible to satisfy your system. So uh, all of that to say um, uh, it's there are, there are some things that I think we can, I mean obviously I'm doing systematic theology with you when I say okay there's this biblical you know, understanding of the human being that's body, mind, and spirit, right? Um, so and I think that's okay. But I think we have to be careful when we get into these corners where we're trying to say, so what exactly happens, for instance, when I die? Right, right. right? So how does that work? Well, I'm not sure we even understand how time 
how we're related to time. Exactly. Or how God is related to time. Right? Is there more than what we can understand? Yeah. Absolutely. Right? And so that's, I think that's just one of those things that uh, either we can't really understand or we don't really need to understand. I mean, I I keep saying this, but I still think it's true, right, that the only reason we really need to know those sorts of things and the only reason we really want to know those sorts of things is so we can game the system. (laughs) Right? So we can game Game the system. Oh, yeah. Right? So that we can say, okay, so so here's where I am. I've got my scales out. I've done this much good. I've done this much bad. If I... if. It, it, you know, if I stand my on my head and throw stones far enough, can I make sure that God yes. can't send me somewhere I don't want to go, right? You know what I mean? Um, I, I think all of that is beside the point. <laughs> playing you know? that game is going to get you trouble. Playing that game. <laughs> yeah, by playing that game, you are sending yourself to hell. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right? Yes, 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 yes. right? And I think that's part of the reason we're not told this stuff. Right is because by playing that game, you're sending yourself to hell. Um, God is in the business of trying to save us from that. Right? It's not a matter of um, uh, kind of moral calculus. It's a matter of submitting yourself to the will of God. Right? I think a lot of it too is it's that's kind of the scripture or the basis of faith. We mm-hmm. don't know. We can't see. We have no idea what the machinations of mechanics are, but by faith we know that we are going to be with Christ at some point. He will, he will definitely Right. Not because there's no evidence on which we base our faith. Mm, right, right. But because the evidence we do have leads to this conclusion, and so the evidence we don't have, we will trust. Right. right? We'll have faith that it goes the same way. I still have a problem. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, Ernie, you do. (laughs) Okay, okay. Set. We we pray for the dead. Yes. Okay. Now, Mm -hmm. pray for the dead Mm -hmm. to help them Mm -hmm. along the way wherever they're going to end up. We we pray for the dead because we don't understand how this works. True. Right? right? And because we love them. Yes. <laughs> right? right? And so we pray that, you know, God's will would continue to operate, and which we know it will, right? Yeah. And that they will be able to grow however this works. Spiritually. That, yeah. Right. However this, this, you know, works mechanically that they will um, get where they need to go, right? right? Uh, yeah, but and, the, and the grow life spiritually. Is, the the life that. is over up to a point, right. then if enough people are praying for this person, it may make a difference. Yeah. As far as with I mean, that person and, 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 and now we're into the whole, uh, the whole um, mystery of prayer, right? Yeah, mystery. right? Yeah, right. Like, how does our prayer affect the outcome? No flip an idea, right? It's not directly, right? It's not that if we just get enough people praying the right prayers that we'll get what we want. Yeah, that's true. But there is an effect. There is an I'm effect. not quite sure how that works. Again, that's another mystery. But we do know that it does work many times. Well, we, we know that it is... Uh, Yeah, so it, it always works. One way or another. <laughs> Prayer always works. Yeah. We are all right? <laughs> it never works because we pr- had enough people praying the right yeah. prayers to make something happen. Right. Right? Yeah. And so, so we can say it always works, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we get what we pray for. Right? That we get what we ask for from God. See where I was coming and, from. And again, you know, you start screaming, my head is stuck in the cupboard. Oh! You know. Because <laughs> my brain hurts. <laughs> so, 
sorry. No. Where I was looking at it, yeah, I mean, go ahead. the body is gone. Okay. So what right. you have is the spirit. Your spirit is living on. You have something. Right? right. We know that you, as Ernie, don't uh, cease to exist. Right? This spirit is going to have to stand in front of God to justify... Or perhaps this soul, complete with body, resurrected, is going to have to stand before God in judgment. I hadn't thought about that aspect. So that's the Hebrew understanding. If you look at the the later prophets, which is where you start getting the idea of resurrection, right? I mean, the the idea of resurrection isn't really in the, the early writings in the Old Testament. It's not part of the. It's not really part of the the Torah, right? It's not in there. Yeah, um, not not that it says it doesn't that's, happen. That's it's just not in there, yeah. right? Um, so, but in the later prophets, right, you start getting. And, and by the way, that's why the Sadducees in the time of Jesus did not believe in the resurrection because it's not in the Torah, right? But the Pharisees did because they took the prophetic writings seriously. Okay, so if you start looking at that, the idea in Daniel and then after that is that we're resurrected to judgment. Right? You're pulling so, me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're resurrected, and then some people will be resurrected to eternal life, and some people will be resurrected, resurrected to damnation. Sure. Right? Whatever that means. And we don't. We don't want to know. We, well, yeah, we probably don't want to know, but we don't. We don't know what that means. We don't. Again, it's the mechanics of all of this, right? Um, whatever it is, it is, and we know that if we end up there, we will have chosen it, right? Because we will have rejected God. So, so, but, but that's the early, um, the early Hebraic understanding of how this works it's not it's not spelled out a lot but that seems to be the earliest idea and frankly I think that's still maybe the best way to think of it right um, yeah. so well, there, there was, when, when Jesus was resurrected mm-hmm. and he asked for food and he ate mm-hmm. Somewhere along the way, he had said that he was flesh and bones, but did not say anything about blood. So could that be that after resurrection, we are flesh and bones, but no circulatory system? Oh, please. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I, I think that's a reach. Um, I, I think uh, when he says I'm flesh and bone, he means physical. That, that's just a, a, a Hebraic way of saying, "Look, I'm a body, mm-hmm. right? I have a body." Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're all about the parallelism and the repetition, right? So flesh and bone, mm-hmm. right? It's hard. Mm-hmm. Here, feel it, right? I think that's more what that's about, and I think. Um, I, I don't think we can understand a human body without some sort of circulatory system. So I, I'm going to say, for now, I'm going to say that we're resurrected to a real human body, which will include a circulatory system. God. Well, I said, for now, I, that's what I'm going to. That's what I'm going to presume. Go ahead, Father. I, uh, I'll help, help say this succinctly. Um, in the Old Testament, there were the appearance of dead prophets. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. There was the Mount of Transfiguration, mm-hmm. uh, etc. Right. Uh, yeah. What if? Yes. There is a world uh-huh. interpenetrating 
our work. Uh -huh. And that God is as near to us as our breath. Yeah. Right now. Right. Right. And maybe that's the way it is. Maybe that's the way it is. Or, or maybe there really is some sort of kind of place of shades, right? Like a, like a Greek Hades or a, or a Hebrew Sheol, right? Um, that seems to be the idea in, uh, in Peter, right? When he says when Jesus died during the three days, which we would call two days, right? <laughs> or a day and a half. That he was in the tomb, he went to preach the souls of, the, uh, of those in, in prison from the time of Noah. Right? Well, maybe there's a place of shades. Right? So, uh, does that mean you're conscious or unconscious? Or what exactly does that mean? Again, yeah, I'm going to say, I don't know, and I think I'm not supposed to know. Um, uh, exactly. Exactly. But that's another, that's another one of those, or a couple more ideas of how this kind of works, right? And, uh, and I don't have a problem with any of this. Of course, you know, I, I'm the guy who says, well, why, how can we know that Jesus wasn't in England with, uh, with his buddy uh, Joseph of Arimathea as a child? Yeah, I don't know, you know? I, I think it's a cool story. Let's, let's believe that. So, yeah. <laughs> well, so the, like the Catholics have purgatory. Yes. I mean, everybody goes to purgatory. Now, if you've done a lot of good work, your time is short. Right. Which is, you know, to me it's just, what? Well, and then they say, and, and if people pray for you while you're there, you can get out quicker. And, right. Uh, yeah. Or if you, if you buy that particular icon, right. it's, it's right. going to get you, it's gonna get you more out. points. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think there's a point system, guys. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I think you can throw your, you know, your scales out. You, know, you don't need a scale. Mm -hmm. um, what you need is complete devotion to Jesus. Exactly. Um, I don't know. And, and to grow in that, because none of us are completely there, right? Maybe that was a mosquito. Sorry. Sorry, you y'all listening at home. I'm trying to kill a mosquito that somehow got inside because all the doors were left open yesterday. Got it. Okay. Good shot. As I was saying... Um, Well, I, 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 I can see that there's always going to be mysteries to a lot of things. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. We just have to accept that fact. Yeah. And, and I don't think... But I don't think it keeps us from yeah. wondering and thinking. It doesn't. I mean, you, you know, we may as well think. But if we're, if we're going to think, we need to also be careful that as we speculate about this stuff, right? Which is fine. You can speculate, mm -hmm. right? But... If you're going to speculate on it, you need to understand and remember that you're going on very little evidence. And so you need to hold these things very lightly. Yeah. Right? Um, in, the, uh, in the Pentecostal churches where they... I mean, I, I had a friend in seminary who, who went to school, you know, you know, as a child in one of these places and told stories. And, and he said, yeah, we literally did uh, rapture drills, right? You stand up, rapture drills, <laughs> right? And it's like, guys, can we get back to the point? <laughs> right? Um, and it's, you know, it's not that I can tell them necessarily that they're wrong either, right? I mean, there may be something that happens there when Jesus comes back. I mean, you know, we don't know a whole lot about it. We just need to remember that he's coming back and that judgment will come with him. And, you know, so don't run out of oil, right? <laughs> Take your oil with you. By golly. So. That reminds me of the song in South Pacific. The, word, the, the words are, you've got to be carefully taught. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, 
back to what Judy was saying, and this is, since you made a point, and he certainly thought of something he did, that it's not for us to know. We can sit here all day long. Yeah. So what I have done in my own life to satisfy that wonderment, I don't have it like Joyce has. I think she has a problem up here. She'll get you back in a couple minutes. It's telling whether you have some memory systems. Yeah. But, you know, I must be known, I work at a lot of genealogy, and I'm over at a cemetery at least three times a week, and I'm looking at headstones, looking at dates of birth and death. So it's in my face all the time as far as death and how long they've been in that hole and stuff like that. Right. So what I come back to when I start wondering about this in my own family and where they might be and the ones I didn't even know, it comes back to me always that God is not limited by time the way we are. At everything we try to figure mm -hmm. out, we mm -hmm. try to do it in our understanding of time. Right. And if you take yourself out of time, which we can't, right. then a lot of it gets answered in, in a way for me. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes, I might have put my mother's body in the grave, but voila, you know, she's out of time. And so... Yeah. Yes, that body itself decays, but the person mm -hmm. that was in that outer shell that right. is me, I understand, is all right. Me. Right. Uh, right. So it's just not that hard for me to get beyond it. I, I think I, I, you, you raise a good point. I mean, I think that um, that if we're going to speculate. The first thing we should do is understand what we don't know, right? Um, so that we're not, I mean, I have, um, I, mean, I asked all these questions, right, at some point, right? <laughs> it's just, um, and at some point I, I came to realize what I think is not in there. Right? And that's kind of why that's what I go back to. Um, because we need to, like, you know, the thing about uh, uh, flesh and bone, right? Well, the first thing you need to know about that is what does it not say? Right? As opposed to what it is saying, right? Because you could, we could spin things out from it all day. But if we go, okay, I'm flesh and bone means that sounds like that Hebrew construction for, look, it, I'm a body, right? Then we don't end up taking things that we don't know away from the scripture and then speculating on those. See what I mean? Um, so, uh, so I think it's important to remember what we can't know, right, and what we may not know, um, and focus on, if we're going to speculate, speculate on those things that we might know but don't. You know what I mean? Um, and I've just come to the conclusion that, that uh, the mechanics of what happens when you die are one of those things that we can't know. Um, exactly. Like we have some hints in there, and we can we can talk about it a little bit. But I'm 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 firmly of the opinion that for all the reasons that we've been talking about, that that we're not going to penetrate that um, very much. You right. Think about the people who Joyce and I die. I'm going to get back in touch with you. I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> you know, Famous ones who was right. couldn't touch with. Yes, yes, that's right. We don't have any, any evidence. Of any of all those people that yes. have done that in the past that yes. truly believe that they yes. can communicate that. Right. Unless you get the fruitcakes and say, "Well, oh, you know, they were right over here." You know, well, you know, who knows if they're fruitcakes or not? Probably most of them are. Right. <laughs> At least most of them are probably right. fruitcakes. But you know, I, I'm not. 
I'm not entirely sure that there are not ghosts. Right? In, in, our, in our traditional way of using that, that term. If, the, if there are, and I'm not sure there are either, if there are, then there has to be some sort of theological reason for that. Right? And I'm not sure what it is. And so I'm not going to worry about it. Right? Uh, you know, um, I have definitely had experiences of places, be, I think, being um, haunted in some, and I'm not sure what that is, right? Is that just an evil spirit, like a fallen angel or something? Maybe. Um, is that the, the spirit of a dead person who, for some reason, is is not where it should be in some sense. Maybe I'm not sure how that would work, but again, I don't understand the mechanics of this. So, um, so I'm not sure. I've certainly had those experiences where I go, okay, there's something here, right? I um, can tell you a story. But, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I'm sure, and we could get off into angel stories and stuff, right? I mean, oh, we, we could go all day on that, but. Um, but again, I'm just not... Uh, I, I know there was some spirit there um, that probably shouldn't have been there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, what exactly it was, I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that we blessed the house and it was gone. Mm-hmm. Right? So, whatever it was, Jesus took care of it. Right? I don't have to worry about what it was. So, so. and there there may be exorcists who would have a, a little more of an answer to some of this stuff than I do. Um, I mean, exorcism is a, a real thing. Um, is, there, it as, is it as big in the Anglican Church as it is in the Catholic Church? Um, well, I would say it's not very big in either. Um, but there are, I mean, I know, I don't know right now, but I know in the past we have had a diocesan exorcist. Okay. I don't know um, they don't make a big deal about it, yeah. but there is, uh, there, there was a priest. At one point, I had, um, uh, it's, since I've been here, I, I had uh, a person who was afraid that, there was something in her house or apartment, and so they called me, and I went to talk to them, and I called the bishop and said, is there someone who helps people deal with this sort of thing? And he said, yes, call Father, and I won't tell you who it is. Um, but, you know, and I, I, I mean, I, it ended up not being a thing that we went very deep into, because there were other reasons, but um, there was somebody to call. Uh, if if there's if there's a situation, you talk to your priest, and, yeah. and you know if I don't know, I'll call the diocesan office and I'll ask. And at this point, uh, we have a low church bishop, so we probably don't have one. And you know, <laughs> he may need to scramble, but that's okay. I mean, we'll we'll figure it out as we go. Um, back to that scripture that we read about God ascending in the clouds. Yeah. Um, if that's not a rapture of individuals, mm-hmm. then what do you think that's telling you? So what, what I see in it, right, um, this First Thessalonians passage, what I see in it is um, a symbolic representation of the return of the Lord and the fact that those of us who are actually happy to see him, which is going to be far fewer than anyone imagines, I think. Um, <clears throat> um, but those who are actually, you know, not afraid, right, um, will have this rapturous experience, right, of meeting him when he comes, right? Um, Maybe it's a little more literal than that. Maybe 
uh, you know, maybe we'll actually be lifted up, but but we don't disappear. I mean, it, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back. Yes. Right? He's, he's, he's going to keep coming down. Right? So if we meet him up there, we're probably going to be back down again too. Right? The people who say no to that are the people who have some idea of the millennium, the thousand years in the book of Revelation in combination with this idea. Um, and they want to they wanna say very specific things about the timeline of when all of this happens. I don't think you can do that. I don't think there's any evidence for that. Um, so... Even if there is something more literal than what I'm giving you, it's a temporary thing. Um, like that's not that's not where we go, right? Where the, then there's a judgment at some point and a new heaven and a new earth. Like where well, you know where that part come from? Go right. So um, I don't know, but. But the but the fact but the fact that the idea of the rapture, uh, as we conceive of it, only came into the to certain parts of the church in the 19th century, um, is also evidence to me that it's probably not really in there. Because if it really were, you know, the people who actually spoke Koine Greek probably would have picked up on it, okay. right. right? Who were the people who were the closest to the the um, the language and culture of the people who wrote this, they probably would have picked up on it quicker. Um, in some sense, even if it weren't spelled out, but there's no sense of that anywhere that I can I have found um, until the 19th century in the Pentecostal sects, right? And it's like. I don't, I don't think you... I mean, this is part of what it means to be Catholic in the broad sense, right? Is to say, I don't, I don't think you guys are smarter than the apostles. Right? right? right. I mean, you, you, you may have a little more of certain kinds of data than, than the apostles. That's fine. But, um, you know, we take, we, we take what we have been given, right? This is the teaching of the apostles. And the apostles don't seem to have made any big deal about this meeting him in the clouds bit. Mm-hmm. Right? So, there you go. So, so all of that to, to say it's, it's not, none of this is absolutely conclusive. Right? Uh, it is to say that it's, it's getting us off the subject. Right? Um, to ask, you know, so how does this all work? And do we get, actually get lifted up into the clouds? That would be cool. I mean, it would be cool. If it, if it happens, I'll be like, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> I told people this probably wasn't going to happen. Ah, silly me, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but whether it happens or not is beside the point, mm-hmm. right? The point is Jesus is coming back. Um, and however that works and whether we're actually physically lifted up into the air or not or whatever that's going to be a big deal right to put it mildly Um, yeah and I know you agree with me on this but you know that's the deal is Jesus comes back and we better be happy to see him yes right um, and we don't know when he's coming back. So we better be happy to see him. Well, now. <laughs> right? When I was uh, taking the first Bible classes that ever really affected me, it was a long mm-hmm. time ago, a woman who was a wonderful teacher. <clears throat> and I was really a baby Christian. And, you know, I, was, I was in my 30s. And sure. I grew up in a church and all. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And she was up in front and she said, if Jesus were to come into my house today, I would throw out my arm and run to him. And I remember thinking at the time, but oh, I, yeah, would. I would run out the back door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Somewhere>, yeah. <laughs> 
after what came out of my mouth, right? Which probably would not be helpful. <laughs> Holy! Holy! <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I think today I'm closer. I mean, I think uh, today I would be like, oh, finally, thank goodness. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> you know? just, just, just tell me what to do. <laughs> but, oh, yes. So. I think at that moment, just to go in my own, own mind, I don't think we would be thinking anything like that except joyous thoughts. I don't think we would be thinking, you know, my house is done, I don't have to do anything else, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would be thinking anything like that other than just joy. Mm -hmm. When you were 30s, mm -hmm. in your 30s, you would feel that way? I, mean, I don't know. <clears throat> when you were in your 30s, you would feel the same way? Uh, I've never thought about it in that way until this moment. Well, you, but I'm 80. I yeah. just turned 80. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's right. That's the gift of age. That's it. That That's is it. the wonderful Partly, gift yeah. of age. You've got a lot of negatives that go along with age, but the wisdom that you are able to acquire just because you have lived and you've done all the things that you are able to acquire just because you have lived mm -hmm. is invaluable to me. Mm -hmm. Invaluable mm -hmm. to me. And I agree when I hear these people that die in their 30s or 20s or they really never had the opportunity to gain the wisdom that only comes by living a long mm -hmm. life. Yeah. A lifelong method. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we have gone far, far over the, our time, so I will stop here. <laughs> yeah. um, but thank you. That was fun. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you for our minds with which we apprehend that. Um, we ask you to uh, give us the grace and wisdom to think clearly with those minds about your word uh, and uh, ultimately to know you better through it. We ask this all in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you.